Oswald always wanted a place where dreams could come true. That's right. And where you can be a part of the magic, too. Oh, and speaking of magic, <laughs> it's time for a little magic right now. Oh, flowers. <laughs> Why, Mickey, they're beautiful. Oh, you're so sweet. Mwah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Say, Mickey, do you have any magic for all our wonderful friends? <laughs> you bet. Look, Minnie. Nothing up my sleeves. Ooh. Remember, everybody, in magic, the mouse is quicker than the eye. Are you ready, Mouseketeers? Here we go! Watch this, everybody! <laughs> Abracadabra, Alakazam, wrap her up and... Welcome! Wow, look who it is, folks. Thank you, Mickey. Ooh, now that's what I call magic. All right, everybody, it's time Thank to get you. on with the show. Come on, gang. Bye. <laughs> so long. Welcome to the National Council's 40th Annual Conference. Disney, as you've seen this morning, is where magic happens, but we know you make magic too. It's not easy or inexpensive to leave daily work behind. The fact that you're here speaks volumes for your commitment to people with mental illnesses and addictions. You want to make sure their needs are front and center. Our conference sponsors and exhibitors share that commitment. Their support helps fund our year-round advocacy and educational activities and allows us to bring you a conference curriculum unequaled in our industry. Two weeks ago, talking about health care reform, President Obama encouraged every family, every business, every patient, every nurse, every doctor to make their voice heard. You have never stopped making your voices heard on behalf of people with behavioral health disorders, and we appreciate that from the bottom of our hearts. At the National Council, your voices are echoed and amplified by a dedicated and creative staff. You read about them, I hope, in yesterday's show daily, and today, they're out and about in their conference t-shirts, ready to help you. This morning, though, I want you to give a very rousing round of applause to a very special staff member, our Executive Vice President, Jeannie Campbell. Jeannie. In today's show daily, and I hope you all got your show daily under your door this morning, in today's show daily, you had descriptions and profiles of our phenomenal board of directors. And tomorrow, you're going to hear directly from some of them. Right now, I'd like to ask Bill Kiles, our board chair, to stand and be recognized. Bill is over there. I'm often struck by how fortunate we are to have a board that, despite their busy days, steps up to serve because they believe that supporting the work of their fellow National Council members is a very good idea. And recently, I have had some time to think about ideas, what makes them good and what makes them bad. Just a few days after the pivotal Massachusetts election, that ended the Democrats' supermajority in the Senate, I left for India on an urgent mission to meet my newest grandchild. I listened to the news from afar. Health care reform wasn't the center of India's world. And for the first time in months, it wasn't the center of my world. My newborn granddaughter, Ava, and her three-year-old brother, Miles, were the center of my world. Each morning, my husband and I took Miles to school, and every afternoon, we picked him up. 
and we began to play a game, good idea, bad idea. Was eating a crispy chocolate chip cookie before you had your lunch a good idea or a bad idea? <laughs> Was taking off your shoes and walking on the tickly but littered grass of Lodi Gardens a good idea or a bad idea? And after a few days of playing the good idea, bad idea game, it became clear that the answer depends on who you are and how you view the world. I had forgotten that not everybody saw the world as I did. New Delhi was all about preparing for the Commonwealth Games, building new sports stadiums, finishing the metro, opening trendy restaurants, and my grandson was all about the pleasures of the day dancing with his papa, and breaking the rules with his nana. And healthcare reform is about expanding coverage and bending the cost curve. Not all Americans are sure that expanding coverage and bending the cost curve is a good idea. It is at some distant future date from their real world, their world of putting food on the table and paying the bills. To some Americans, it sounds like a rarefied idea that comes from DC that some policy wonks thought up. If a year ago you'd been asked to describe the goals of the Barack Obama administration, it would have been this. Obama will usher in the third grade wave of democratic reform. Franklin Roosevelt had the New Deal. Lyndon Johnson had the Great Society. Obama would take the third step, transforming health care, energy, education, and all the other sectors of American life. But don't let your involvement end here. I urge you to join us for our sixth annual Hill Day, June 29th and 30th. Let your voices continue to be heard in the halls of Washington. The behavioral health community is waiting for us to act. They're waiting for us to lead. They have come to expect no less. I encourage you to come to Hill Day if you've never made the trip. And if you're an old hand, we need your knowledge and expertise. It will take every one of us, 1,700 National Council member organizations, your boards, the 250,000 staff you employ, the consumers, the six million consumers, adults, children, and families that you serve to continue to advance our agenda. Take the time when you leave here to put your card up on our pledge board, our Fight for the Future pledge board. What you're going to be doing by attaching your business card is committing to three things, to coming to Hill Day, to responding to our action alerts, and to hosting a congressional staff in your organization. They need to see your good ideas at work. Since I began my remarks this morning by mentioning the loss of Ted Kennedy's seat in the US Senate, it seems fitting that I close with some words from him. He said of health care reform, this is the cause of my life, that we guarantee that every American, north, south, east, west, young and old, will have decent quality health care as a fundamental right and not as a privilege. If we do not turn aside, if we dare to set our course for the shores of hope, we together will go beyond the divisions of the past and find our place to build the America of the future. Senator Kennedy concluded, the work begins anew, the hope rises again, and the dream lives on. Thank you. Thank you.